the land in the world is used for pastures, 23% for forest, less than 10% for cultivation. The remaining 45% majority can yet be used for growing crops. Why don't you use that? Why are you running after the food of the animals, poor living creatures? Let them live, let them eat. Why are you stopping them from eating? If the non-vegetarians stop slaughtering the cattle, do you know that there will be overpopulation of cattle? Overpopulation. I am aware that human beings, they raise animals for food. That means, by methods, they increase the multiplication of animals. But if, suppose, I agree that from today, all non-vegetarians stop raising animals for food and stop killing them for food. Yet they will grow in population. You know why? Human beings. In all these years, our population is increasing. Even with all the family planning method, with all the birth control, hum do, hamare do, yet we are increasing. There is no birth control method among the cattle, and the gestation is less than the human beings. Five months to six months to eight months. Less than the human beings. And they multiply faster. So if we stop killing and stop raising, yet, within a few decades, you'll have problems not of overpopulation of human beings, of overpopulation of cattle. <laughs> How are we going to solve it? There are various nutrition he talked about protein, etc. If time permits, I will speak in the rebuttal. I would like to make a statement of Dr. George R. Kerr, which is sufficient to counter all his arguments on health. Dr. George R. Kerr, he is a professor of nutrition in the University of Texas. Why I'm giving the designation, you can come to know that these people actually specialize in catching health fraud people who deal in fraud in health. He says that virtually all authors of the diet and disease books, they propose hypotheses which are untested, ill-tested, unfound, unlikely, or disproved. I would like to repeat. Dr. George R. Kerr says virtually all authors of books on diet and disease, they propose a hypothesis which is ill-tested, unfound, non-tested, unlikely, or disproved. Time is running short. I would like to make the statement that is given by the American Council on Science and Health. Just a statement. See, they are experts. These quotations of research aren't scientific facts. All this quotation that this causes this disease, that, some are scientific facts, but they can be prevented. But the other thing was mentioning about this land and that land, these are only statistics done by individual researchers. Even when you do PhD, you can do a research, and that will come into account, but won't carry weight. American Council on Science and Health says that a person need not abstain from meat and be a vegetarian to have a healthy diet. And the topic is not veg or non-veg, which is healthier. It is, is non-veg food permitted or prohibited for the human beings? And I will list out the points in summary to make it easier for Mr. Zaveri to answer in the rebuttal. Point number one, there is not a single major religion which bans or prohibits all non veg food in general. Point number two, geographical places like Arctic Eskimos live, how could you have provided food all these years back? And today also if you provide, it's going to be more expensive. Point number three, if all life is sacred, why do you kill the plants, even they have life? Point number four, even plants feel pain. Point number five, even if I agree they have two senses less, killing a creature of two senses less is a lesser crime, is illogical. Point number six, it's preferable to kill one animal and take one animal life than to take 100 lives of plants for feeding 100 people. Point number seven, each and every argument can be disproved, the liver and the kidney, HCL. Same with saliva, same with the pH of the blood, same with the lipoprotein. Point number eight, the human beings have an omnivorous set of teeth for eating veg as well as non-veg. Point number nine, they have a digestive system which can digest both veg and non-veg and have proved it scientifically approved by the enzymes. 
Point number 10, primitive man was non-witch. So you can't say it's private for human beings. Human beings is even for that person. Point number 11, the food you eat has an effect on a behavior, but saying that non-witch food makes you violent has got no scientific base at all. Point number 12, giving argument that veg food makes you strong, makes you peaceful, makes you intelligent, makes you athletes, are all myths. Point number 13, night vision and sense of smell is strong in carnivorous. In herbivorous, it is this. The carnivorous animal have hoarse voice, you know, coarse voice. Herbivorous animal don't have coarse voice, are all illogical arguments. Point number 14, that veg food is cheaper, I've disproved it. It's not economical. In certain countries, yes. Like India, it can be. But if you go abroad, in the Western countries, veg food is more expensive. And fresh veg food is phenomenal. Fresh vegetables. Furthermore, point number 15, that the land required to graze the animal will cause scarcity of the land for growing crops is also wrong. Point number 16, if the non-vegetarians stop slaughtering the cattle, do you know that there will be overpopulation of cattle? Point number 17, according to Dr. Kerr, these books written by dietitian, they can't be read upon. All the statistics given are mainly from there. There is not a single statement, point number 18, in any authentic medical book which says non-veg food in general should be banned. Point number 19, there is not a single government on the face of the earth which has banned all non-veg food as a general rule. And point number 20, that even the American Council on Science and Health has said that for a healthy diet, being a pure vegetarian is not required. These are sufficient proof, logical and scientific, that non-veg food has to be permitted. If Mr. Zaveri doesn't agree, I request him to answer scientifically, not by comparison on just researches. But yet if Mr. Rashmi by Zaveri doesn't reply to more than 20 points which I've put forth, yet I will not ask him to become a non-veg, because I'm not a fanatic non-vegetarian. I'm not. Yet if you want to continue eating vegetarian food, I have got no objection. It's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. Some people like due to certain taste, etc. It's a personal choice. And only thing I'd like to tell the people that the vegetarians, the ideological vegetarians who do so much propaganda that this has got more value, etc., they should stop such things and stop distributing these type of books which mislead the people. I would like to end my talk by giving the question of the glorious Quran from Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 125, which says, Odu ila sabili hasna, wajadun ahsan. That is, invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Wa akhru dawan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin.